Welcome back to the program. I'm glad you're watching. It is uh, Health Corner here on WBS TV. I have Dr. Semere in the studio with me to discuss Kaposi's sarcoma, one of the cancers that is associated with HIV AIDS. Dr. Semere, before we went for a break, we're talking about diagnosis. And of course, there are a few things. You know, for our friends, viewers, people in the community, people who come to the hospitals, the moment you talk about a biopsy, even the attendants will say, no, 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 no. Mm. With my patient, do not do that. People are scared. Mm. How can you assure them that this is a safe procedure? And go ahead. Yeah, so the initially, I would like to say that it seemed to be a daunting process getting mm. a biopsy mm. because it needed quite a set of equipment that you would have to assemble mm. and even the set of skills that you need to put together. So it seemed like a, a very long process. And actually, I agree that some patients may have thought that this is rather complicated. But we have boiled it down to mm. just the basics. And um, just to reassure our patients that the approach we are using is rather painless. It's as very fast and blood free. And the piece we take off is just about four millimeters in diameter. It's a small piece. Very tiny. And so the truth, truth to be said, uh, it's, and I think the, 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 the discomfort you would get from this procedure it's almost similar to actually drawing blood from your arm. Okay. I would really quote it to that. So it's not a painful procedure? No. If you, if you, I, I, you can imagine a lot of people have, have had a blood You know, people drop. think I know. that when you take a kanyam, mm -hmm. you're going to make the disease spread and grow faster. <laughs> That's not true, That's right? not true. Okay. Actually, we need, we need to confirm that one has KS so that we can decide quickly on what treatment to give. Dr. Semed, is this service available in Mulago? Indeed it is. Um, if you come to Mulago Hospital mm. and come to the Infectious Diseases Institute, it's what within the compound okay. of Mulago Hospital. In, we, in IDI, which I could, that's Infectious Diseases Institute, we have a room, room number 143. There's a whole team 143. ready. 143. Yes, there's a whole mm. team ready to receive you. To, and there are people there who usually do uh, these biopsies. To make it even more interesting, uh, we have tried to educate some people up country and even some people at referral hospitals. And we actually get biopsies from in and around the country for KS. And these are free of charge. Okay. Um, actually, I was going to ask that how much does one have to pay to get this service? No, this is free of charge. You know, Henry, uh, why why we're doing this is mm. a colleague of ours um, in the team I work with actually checked the patients who had been called to have Kaposi sarcoma. You know, previously, people because there was a lot of it with mm. HIV, mm. so clinicians thought that, you know, we are comfortable diagnosing this by eye, as, as someone says. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so... It's as obvious as Kaposi sarcoma. Yes, as <laughs> obvious as Kaposi sarcoma. And we actually discovered that, you know, 30, 40% of the time they were wrong. So you can imagine for a cancer, and by the way, the other conditions that may look like Kaposi may actually be bacterial infections. Mm. They may just be skin rashes, okay. allergies. Mm. And so these do not need chemotherapy for cancer. Mm. And so it's vital, and even the protracted treatment that we give for Kaposi. And even you, Henry, if I told you you have cancer, yet you don't. Mm -hmm. The stress that you go through. Mm. So, so we need to make a right we diagnosis. We need to make a right diagnosis, communicate right to the patient. And, and, and so this is really why we need to do it right. Okay. Mm. Now you've made a diagnosis. Yes. Is it treatable? Indeed it is. In fact, in this day and age, uh, it's one of those cancers with a potential for cure. There are very few cancers like this in the world. Mm. Kaposi sarcoma is a cancer you treat, think about it, without even using the, you can treat it without even using some of the toxic chemotherapy that you, some of you may have had. 
So well, how do we treat early Kaposi sarcoma? Usually, we can decide whether it's early or not as part of the evaluation. Mm. And that is really when you the patient comes, we, dis we, we, we look at the patient, examine all the areas, and decide that this is early. And this is usually limited to the skin and not involving the organs in the middle or uh, in, inside the body, so-called viscero, the, the lungs, the, the, the intestines, and the, some of the lymph nodes. And it's just on the skin can be treated with antiretroviral therapy. Okay. That's ART. Those are the three drugs that we use to treat HIV. So for sure, we can treat your HIV the same way we treat your Kaposi, without even any... Without one go with, uh, like the one they're showing, would it go with simple ARVs? Now that is not the one that we shall usually treat with only simple ARVs. That is rather extensive, mm -hmm. and sometimes when we... The decision may not be made by what we see there. Sometimes it's made by actually also checking the blood work, looking at the CD4 of the patient, the level of the immune system. Mm. We, that is a part of the staging. And of course, I need to examine other areas on this individual. Okay. And usually, if it's rather extensive in that case, that's when we may go for chemotherapy. Rarely, though, sometimes some people with aggressive lesions, which are small, one or two, they may get what's called local chemotherapy. Okay. They may put it directly in the lesion. In the lesion. Okay. That's usually done at a cancer institute. And those are rare. Those are usually few. we tell people yeah. that the earlier we make a diagnosis, the better. Does that apply to Kaposi? Support? In fact, that is like the mainstay of the treatment. That's actually why I'm here. You know, if we knew, if uh, I remember seeing a, a couple of patients, you tell them you have a cancer, they are worried. But because it's early, we give you antiretroviral therapy mm. and it actually vanishes off your skin because it is early. Unfortunately, a ton of our patients get to us when it is beyond that stage. And so they need the chemotherapy. Okay. Um, yes, someone may argue that actually there's chemotherapy at Cancer Institute isn't that enough. Mm. Unfortunately, the chemotherapy for advanced KS is not yet good enough. Or the available one, maybe let me correct myself, the available one is not that good, the one we can afford. Mm. The very good one is still way beyond most so of expensive. the population. It's mm. very expensive, prohibitively mm. expensive. Okay. And so right now, it seems like the, the, the solution that we can have is treat it early. We ha I, I saw one of my friends recently, a patient, mm. who uh, I was called to see at, at IDI. And this gentleman, typifies what I think the message should be to most of our patients. This gentleman had the swelling. It was in an area he couldn't see. Mm. But I saw him pull out his wallet and pull out a mirror and say, I saw this here. And he showed me something. Oh, he used, he used, he used a mirror, the mirror to see, to see uh -huh. and tell me this was abnormal. Now you can see that this man really took time to examine himself. And this is the message I want to pass on to our patients. Mm. Sometimes we call it, you know the scratcher? The little round scratcher with a mirror. Behind the mirror? Yes. Hey. It's one of those very simple tools that I think should be in the arsenal of every one of our HIV patients. That you can try and look in the areas which may be a little far off to, for these abnormal things that are happening on your skin. I really think the patients should take the lead mm -hmm. to check themselves. Because sometimes our clinics are busy mm. and the clinicians may not have even the space to strip exactly. you down to check. Yeah. Although I would encourage the clinicians to do that. Oh, but, and it's very important. But I want to throw the ball also to the patient to bring attention to these lesions that are actually abnormal on their skins. And you see, if you do, that's when the clinician is prompted and says, oh yeah, I think that looks abnormal. Mm. And we can usually take um, action. Okay. Henry, there is something small I would like to touch. Go ahead. Again in this area. Mm. Do you know that almost half of our of the people actually who have HIV do not know they have HIV? I see. Some you know this is actually where it should actually start from. Mm -hmm. We are dealing with those with HIV who know. But the largest chunk of the masses do not know actually they that they have HIV. You, you, do you mean to say they have not tested? Kaposa coma can be 
the first manifestation? Of course. And actually, by the time you see it, if you even don't know you have mm. HIV, you mm. won't even be looking out for it. So, if you find yourself, to, if you don't know whether you have HIV, mm -hmm. you may find yourself with the first thing that shows up on your skin as Kaposi. Remember, almost half our population have the virus that causes Within Kaposi. themselves. Yes. Mm. So, if you don't know you have HIV, your immune system just slumpens down and you you know, the first thing that shows up are these swellings on your body. And you may take your time. Unfortunately, it's spreading. And so, I want to encourage our people. If you really, all of us, should make it a point in this day and age to know HIV status, at mm. least annually. It's free of charge. And it's available at most health centers. And it will help us know how to treat whoever has the disease. Uh, again, w before leaving that point, about at what stage you know we all un understand when you talk about abacidically yeah. the immune system yes, sir. at what numbers do we expect kaposi sarcoma to come in the hiv journey yes uh that's a very is it course. at the beginning we don't need the actual numbers yes we, is it when you have early disease mm -hmm. is it when you have late disease when does it usually appear most times unfortunately it appears towards the end so when your immune system, when your immune going system down. is really low and of course if i was to give you numbers it's below uh 200 below 100 you really are struggling mm -hmm. and imagine you have cancer on top of a very weak immune system and usually there are a lot of other components mm. and that is really a lot of burden for someone to shoulder and so uh, as we uh, as I mean Henry rarely you see it with somebody with a very good immune system rarely but largely most people will come in when it's, it is depressed yes. which means at what stage should one take that vaccine? Do you have a vaccine for that? I wish we did. It's part of the How do you prevent it? How do we prevent Kaposi sarcoma? Mm. Oh, if you know, the first thing is to know your HIV status. You see, the virus is with us. Henry, you may have the virus. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know your HIV status, you won't know where you are in relation Kaposi. You see, you have to have the virus, mm -hmm. HHV8, case that Kaposi sarcoma virus, you have HIV. Those two sort of have to be together. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know this HIV, whether it's there, then you are in the dark. Okay? Usually we don't bother about checking for this virus. We worry about HIV because it has more companies, including mm -hmm. this virus. Okay? So, so I don't have to go, to go for the that virus, uh, Kaposi sarcoma Kuma virus. virus. No, about. not yet. Not yet. That's for the researchers. That's for researchers because mm -hmm. we are trying to, even, I'll tell you, this is a little deeper. Mm -hmm. But for now, for most people, what we worry about is, do you know your HIV status? Mm -hmm. If you do, then look out for these swellings on your body. That's the easiest thing is when you see them early, mm -hmm. then you come in. If you're not on ARVs, we shall put you on ARVs. If you are on ARVs and you see them, then for sure even some chemo for you may work early may work because early. you already have one of the treatments. Mm. And so, again, your chances of recovery, your chances of survival are much higher. Okay. So, unfortunately, we don't have a specific drug to treat this, this virus. You know, when Those you mentioned that uh, it is an infection-related cancer. Yes. And I know these days we have a number of vaccines for yes. hepatitis, for yes. cancer of the cervix. Yes. So I was thinking that, mm, don't we have a vaccine for Kaposi sarcoma? Or oh, you guys are working on that? That one is something in development. In fact, there are two pronged. The reason actually we bring this up is in the present work that I'm doing, while ARVs have reduced the occurrence of this cancer, mm. it's not down to zero. Okay. It's not down to that state we started from in the 70s. Mm. It's really still there, lingering on, almost to the level of prostate cancer. Now, you know, prostate cancer is a fairly common cancer. Very so very so common. it's still around. So that's now where we are working on. So that, wha that such that I'm not, uh, even if you're near a visa, I tell you to check yourself because you're still at risk. There's some risk, okay, 
of you developing this cancer. So for the vaccine, we are still studying the horizon and trying to see at which point we can develop it. Dr. Semere, it scares to know that a number of us might be having the vi virus. Mm -hmm. How does one get that virus? Yeah, true. Do you have an idea how? The one of, again, the colleagues on this team I'm working on and the other people mm. have documented that they actually followed children from birth. Okay. Usually people are not born with these things. They are born like a blank you know the blank CD or blank <laughs> tape? Blank <laughs> tape. <laughs> you start with a blank tape. Mm. So the really they are born without this, with the, without this virus. And they followed children mm. and discovered that by the time the children were between the ages of 5 to 10, a chunk of them actually had developed the, vi the, 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 the they had had the infection, almost the level of the rest of the population. In other words, saying that we pick this up in our childhood, okay. preferably from saliva, um, and uh, um, from the saliva and interactions, it's actually largest common in saliva, by the way. And so it's likely that the things children exchange with one another, mm. from sometimes the mother chews some of the food and gives the child, mm. those are the practices that may be transmitting it via saliva. But additionally, there have been studies that have sh suggested uh, transmission by uh, blood transfusion, but these are rare. Okay. Again, there have also sexual transmission has been uh, theoretical, uh, there has been also documented, sorry, mm. and so, but those are rare, they are, they are very low levels of the virus in those other fluids. Okay. Yes, but commonly it's saliva, saliva and it's during childhood. That the practices that people do. Do, right. Okay, could continue Within our that. community. Okay. Yeah, and you know, sometimes because, it, by the way, Henry, some people may be worried that, oh, that virus, what am I going to do about it? Am I going to get sick? Unfortunately, it doesn't give us anything. Mm. You won't feel ill, but there are so many viruses we live with, and this is one of them. Until your immune system actually, you know, depreciates due to some issue, okay. that's when it shows up. So before that, don't even worry about it. You saw those lesions. Yes. Mm? Mm. A person has lesions everywhere. Right. Is there anyone who can handle them and they don't get infected? In other words, mm. how contagious is Kaposi's Kaposi. sarcoma? Va okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, those lesions are not contagious. So you can be with someone yes. who has Kaposi's sarcoma, sarcoma and you don't get it? Well, as I told you, it's mm. from saliva. Mm -hmm. And that's really That's for the virus. That's for the virus. The actual cancer mm. is not contagious. In fact, it's a swelling that would, you know, most of it uh, is, is abnormal cells mm -hmm. that the cancer has brought about mm. that would actually, you know, sometimes get extra infections or something else and it will need treatment. Sometimes even we treat it with antibiotics mm. because of the swellings and, and so basically you would not, you shouldn't worry so much about this, you getting Kaposi from the lesion. You know why I'm saying this? Yes, Back in the true. days, yes. I used to practice home-based care. Right palliative care for cancer patients and HIV. And I remember I found a gentleman who had been moved mm. from his house into what looked like a goat's house. Mm. And I think the family was worried that they might get the disease because the gentleman had lesions everywhere. So I wanted to know, is it safe for someone to take care of a patient with a sarcoma and they won't get a problem? Yes, of course, you know, we are talking about a context where there's also HIV and we have to talk about some barrier because of HIV infection. Mm. If you have a cut, if you have a wound, make sure it's dressed, okay? But the actual Kaposi, you cannot catch it. You won't get it. From, from treating or helping somebody. So with the confidence, you can tell the, the general public yeah. that taking care of a patient with KS. Yes will not make you become... No, it won't. It won't. We'll go for a short break. Yeah. When we come back, we'll try to see if we can take some of your questions, comments, or any contributions you want to be part of this show. When we get back. <laughs> 